Vermont Yankee, I see no reason to continue the operation of Vermont Yankee after 2012, period. Okay, and there are a lot of reasons for that, uh, and let me explain why I feel that way, and I feel strongly about this. Um, first, uh, well, th let me also say that I think those reasons are partly financial, uh, but for me they're partly moral as well. It's about what we're leaving behind. Um, but first of all, Entergy has given us no confidence over the last couple of years uh, it's given me no confidence that they can operate that plant safely and reliably. And that's what that's a bottom line uh, issue for me. Um, secondly, you know, we're, we're waiting to see what sort of rate they're going to offer us here in Vermont. And they may offer us a favorable rate, but that rate is not going to include the hidden costs. And those hidden costs are going to relate to decommissioning. We could get stuck with that bill. It's going to relate to, um, to waste storage, and we could get stuck with that bill too. I have no confidence that we won't get stuck. Uh, with, with those bills. Uh, and that means we're going to be doing what the federal government has been doing, which I think is just morally wrong, which is passing on our debts and our problems onto future generations. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, keeping, also keeping Vermont Yankee going for another 20 years, and my understanding is it's zero or 20, keeping it going for 20 years takes all the wind, so to speak, pardon the pun, out of our sails on re developing uh, renewable energy. Uh, we need to have that plan in place. We need to be very aggressive about that. And keeping focused on 2012 says to the next governor of the state of Vermont that we are going to develop our conservation programs, our efficiency programs, and our renewable energy, including wind. Part of the question deals with wind. I believe that we have to have wind power. The aesthetic issues for me are important, but they aren't as important as what happens with every other source of power, which are long-range issues. The aesthetic issues can come and go, wind turbines can come down at some future time, but everything else we're doing is having a lasting impact on our environment and on our globe. Um, finally, uh, nuclear power I mentioned is, is, a, is a moral issue, and it really is what I said earlier about what we're leaving to future generations. Again, I don't think we have the right to saddle future generations for tens of thousands of years with nuclear waste. Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a plan for it, we don't have a solution for it, and I don't want to see us continue that. On Vermont Yankee question, let me just ask, uh, answer that as quickly as I can. Uh, the speaker and I have promised a fair and open process as we consider this question, and there's a lot of people in this audience, Senator Jenny Lyons, Senator Hinda Miller, uh, Representative Klein and others who are working hard on this question, and Tony Klein's doing a great job over in the House. I would vote no today for five reasons. The first is reliability. We appointed, uh, the governor, the speaker, and myself appointed three folks to, to investigate the reliability of the future of that plan. The uh, speaker put on Peter Bradford, I put on Arnie Gunderson, who's done a great job for me. They came back and they identified 80 areas of concern. The plant so far has addressed 16 of those areas. We've got to make sure that the others are addressed. Second, waste. I am from Wyndham County. We, if you don't know that, happen to have a high level nuclear waste dump in a flood plain on the banks of the Connecticut River. When we built that plant and many, many years ago, the legislature approved it with this condition that the federal government would ensure that Vermont was not a high level nuclear waste dump. We are, we will be for the foreseeable future. The more we make, the more we host. If there's anyone in this audience the, the, I was on the radio the other day with Jay Thayer of the uh, Vice President uh, of Energy, and he called that a tremendous resource. If there's anyone in this audience who would come and take that resource from us, be our guest. But until we find someone who's coming for it, we shouldn't make more. Third, decommissioning. As you know, the Speaker and I, this great legislature, has passed two different bills to the governor, and it's a very simple bill. It simply says Energy. Before you spin us off to a highly leveraged Wall Street entity that makes Fairpoint look like a brilliant idea, we simply ask you this. Guarantee that if your Wall Street dream fails, that you will fill the decommissioning fund and pay for the promise you made when you bought it from Green Mountain Power and CB, which is to turn it to a soccer field down in Vernon when you're done. Well, guess what, folks? There's $400 million in the decommissioning fund. It would take $1 billion to take it away today. Entergy doesn't seem interested in filling the hole. They're more interested in your having that liability, and your, from the great people of the state of Vermont, having that cost. That's not acceptable. If we go back in January, we'll try a third time. My guess is the governor will veto the bill again, but we're going to get new leadership. Fourth, price. 
How many people have been told in this room and across Vermont that we must relicense Vermont Yankee because it is such cheap power? I have one question for you. If it's so cheap, why won't they tell us what the price would be? They're now a year late and a dollar short. Fourth, and most importantly, I've already alluded to it, the spin-off. I need your help in educating Vermonters about the spin-off. It's this simple. What Entergy tends to do, and they're very well-financed, thoughtful, good company that make lots and lots of money. That's their job. Entergy's job is to make money for their shareholders, and they do it very well. So here's the plan. They're going to go down Wall Street, and you wouldn't think, you know, that the whole world economy had been sunk by schemes like this, but what they're going to do is they're going to borrow $3.5 billion, that's billion, not million, and when they leave the closing, this new entity was called, uh, what was it? And that, no, Nexus, but they used to call it Spinco. They renamed it. But when they leave Wall Street, uh, Nexus is going to have six aging nuclear power plants, $3.5 billion that they're going to give to Entergy, so they're going to go put that in the stockholders' pockets. It's a good deal because Entergy bought those plants cheap, $3.5 billion. And that's a lot of money, so they've done well. And then they have to borrow another $1.2 billion to run the company. So we will have, we will have, a company with $4.7 billion worth of debt, six old nuclear power plants, and high-level waste on the banks of the Connecticut River. I know one way that we will not be in a leadership role, and that is if we relicense a depreciated nuclear facility that insists on storing nuclear waste on the banks of the Connecticut River. Three years ago, I called for the closing of Vermont Yankee as it was scheduled in 2012. And at that time, I was told, how are you going to replace that power in such a short amount of time? How are you going to make the steps so that we don't have spot market prices and problems? And the fact is that every day that goes by that we are not clear about what we are going to do with Vermont Yankee is simply irresponsible. If we are trying to replace that power in 2011 for a 2012 closing, it will have a dramatic impact on ratepayers. It right now is having an impact on the 600 people who work there or on pins and needles not knowing what their future is. And it will have an impact on our business climate where people, where, where companies that use energy will not know on a day-to-day -day basis what the energy costs are going to be. We need to make it clear now, and we need to make it clear so that we can start moving forward with a plan to replace that energy. There's also an opportunity here, which is part of our future, that if we move now and we move quickly, we can jumpstart the kind of work and revolution that I think the rest of the country <coughs> expects of us. We can move quickly with wind, we can move quickly with geothermal, we can move quickly with a wide variety of energy solutions, including efficiency, and also including distributed power, to make sure that we have a minimal disruption when Vermont Yankee goes offline, and that we can all be confident that, 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 that Vermont Yankee will be a decommission and clean area for Vermonters in the future to use and it will not be used as a divisive political attack. It doesn't take a long time in business to know, as Peter pointed out, that when you spin off a company, there's a reason for doing that. And when Energy spun off the shell, what they were doing is trying to get out of liability. Now there's a lot of discussion about what liability that is. Is that financial liability for the ultimate decommissioning? In many ways, I hope so. Because one of the other alternatives is that it's liability for the safety of Vermonters. And that we simply cannot abide by.